Welcome to the Portionality Podcast, a curiously sermonic podcast playground for adulting over 30. Because let's keep it real, life will keep life in, with swift transitions, but together we can honor the moments we are in and keep on living. I am your host, Portia Williams Gates. Join me every Wednesday as we grow and live together. If there was anything, anything at all, a piece of advice, a piece of wisdom that I could give you that is evergreen in every season of your life, it is this. Beloved, go with God. That's it. (laughs) I would literally tell you to go with God. And yeah, that is what I would tell you if I just had one lesson to ever share with anybody at any point in time. It is to go with God. And with that, I want to welcome you back to the Portionality Podcast. I am your host, Portia Williams Gates. If you have not done so, make sure you are following this podcast, that you are subscribed. If you do me a favor, go ahead and share this podcast with somebody. And if you are feeling up to it, go ahead and donate to this podcast. You can do that at the link in the description box, in the show notes, in the description. You can find that link. It is a PayPal link and you can donate to this podcast. We greatly appreciate it. <laughs> so this episode is all about discernment. And so I don't know about you, but there will become multiple times in your life where you might be discerning something, right? You may be trying to figure something out. You may be perceiving something. You may be trying to do your best to make a well-informed decision. And you're trying to be really perceptive in life. You're trying to pay close attention and be mindful of your judgment. And you're using all of your wisdom and all of your insight and all of your ability and all of your intuition to perceive the things that are not immediately apparent, right? So that is discernment. And so you may be called to something in your life and you will need to discern. So why am I even bringing that up? I recently had the opportunity to attend a discernment retreat in the Rockies. (laughs) The Rocky Mountains, y'all. Your girl was outside in the wilderness. (laughs) literally having a whole, you know, Mount Sinai, Mount Ararat, you know, experience, message from the Mount, whatever you want to call it. Your girl was up way high in the sky talking to God and talking to some young people with a phenomenal organization that I love to work with called FTE. And I had a bomb time. I really did. And as I was leading these young people um, into their own discernment, of their call of what God is calling them, I was also in my own discernment process. And see, this is the thing. And this is what I told my group. I told them, I said, let me tell you something. No matter where you find yourself in life, you are always going to be discerning something because God never stops calling. You will have multiple calls in your life. And the best thing you can do in the moment and the season that you are in is to be present to the moment and the season you are in. And FTE likes to say, um, you know, what is your next most faithful step? What is the thing that I can do right now? One simple step, the next right step, right? The faithful step that I can do right now that is going to get me closer to where I need to go or who I am becoming. And sometimes we like to plan out the five-year plan, the 10-year plan, you know, have everything all mapped out. And there's nothing wrong with planning, but sometimes that planning process can be incredibly overwhelming for many. I know it absolutely is overwhelming for me. And so I have to return to my toolbox and just ask myself, Portia, what is your next most faithful step? Okay, that is what I have learned from FTE over the years of being a part of their network is what is the next most faithful step. And as I am consistently discerning, um, you know, what is the next step? I am giving myself grace in the process to go with God. 
and to listen for God. And listening for God is not always um, as clean cut as we always make it sound, but it is intentional, right? It takes intention to listen for God. Sometimes you may be able to hear God right, quite audibly in your ears, like in your inner knowing, in your inner space. Um, and sometimes you may hear God through interactions with people, right? So say you ever had the someone you're talking to and you're like, oh my gosh, someone just told me that like two days ago. And then someone else turns around and says the same thing. Like, oh my gosh, like I just heard someone else say that, right? That is the spirit that is God trying to speak to you and helping you through a process, guiding you, right? So if someone is saying and multiple people are telling you the same thing, that might be the spirit calling your attention to something very specific. And sometimes we're always looking for a sign, a sign, a sign, a sign. And a lot of times the things that we need are already in our midst. So we went over um, to the biblical text in the story of Elisha and the widow and her oil um, in her jars, right? And Elisha shows up and asks her, um, what can I do for you and what do you have? And I really was so struck by that because this is a text I have heard numerous times, right? Like numerous times. Um, And one of my close friends um, has a bomb sermon on uh, the widow and the widow's oil in Elisha. But Elisha asks this very, very, very practical question. What can I do for you? What do you have in your house? Ugh. What do you have in your house? Sometimes we're always looking around outside of ourselves and outside of our world and outside of our ecosystem to try to find the answer for what God is calling us to do or what God would want us to do next, rather than just looking at what is right in our midst. Oftentimes when you are discerning, when you are seeking God and you are seeking the next right step in your life or what your purpose is or what your call is, right? A lot of times the evidence is already in your midst. The tools that you need to make it happen are already in your in your midst. The tools for who you are becoming are already in your midst. Your life experiences, all of these opportunities are right in your midst. Everything you need you already have. And quite frankly, we don't give ourselves enough permission to perceive what is around us because we're so caught up in our own anxieties about, you know, I don't have enough or I got to go do this or I got to go get another degree or I need to go get a certificate or I need to read more books or I need to get a better network and I need to talk to more people. It's like, well, who are the people who are already around you? How about we just start talking to them, right? And so discernment, as a process is communal in the sense that you can start talking to people you already know and seeing what comes up, right? Ask someone a question like, huh, what do you think my gifts are? What do you think I'd be good at, right? Just asking and surveying people, right? Asking God, reading scripture, allowing yourself to be still and to listen, right? One of my favorite techniques I talk about all the time is journaling, just journal, right? Journal and allow yourself to just get things on paper and write, like write that thing, right? Just keep writing. And you might be surprised that some things may start to emerge as you allow your conscious mind and your subconscious mind to just fall out onto the page, right? Get the writing. If you're, if writing's not your thing, maybe you should talk it out. And if you're a talk it out kind of person, maybe you should start a podcast. I don't know. <laughs> you know, shameless plug there. Mm-hmm. Fortunata Media, always. Boop, 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 boop. But yeah, talk it out, right? Allow yourself to process things in real time and to see what is in your miss as you survey the land. And so when I was talking to the young people, Um, I shared in my own story how I have come to this work that I'm currently doing through my project, you know, within school, through what I have perceived God to be calling me into with digital sacred space, what God has called me into as a preacher and transferring these skills into the podcast and the podcasting industry, right? I have Um, I have all of these skills and I'm just really grateful to be able to say that all of the gifts and all the experiences that you have are meeting you right at the moment where you need them the most, right? All of your skills 
everything you need is meeting you right when you need them. And everything you have ever gone through is repurposed for this moment. And so I was just so um, deeply and profoundly blessed by this opportunity to be in the wilderness. Okay, let me tell you something. There were deers, there were elks. Apparently there are mountain lions, but I couldn't see them. And if they could see me, child, I mean, that means it was on to me if I could see it. Okay. But we had a fantastic time and I could just embrace mm, my God, I could embrace silence. I could embrace quiet. I could embrace the sounds of nature, the cool air. And child, let me tell you something, the elevation is real. If you ever go up to Colorado and you in the Rockies, baby, please drink some water. We don't need nobody passing out, okay? Because that is not cute. (laughs) Passing out due to dehydration and lack of water is not cute when you are on a retreat. Like, pick yourself up and put yourself together. Um, and, you know, that's really about myself because I felt that elevation real quick. I was warned and foretold to drink that water. And child, when I got there, I was like, oh yeah, this is not a game. So for real, if you were ever finding yourself in the Rockies, make sure you are drinking your water, but you should be drinking your water and minding your business anyway, because that is a way of life, you know, hello. But yeah, so I was just really blessed um, by these young people and their their various calls and what they're discerning and what they're thinking about and their questions. And I'm, I, I love how asking questions can just lead you down a path to finding out what you're going to do next, right? Just sometimes we just need to have the courage to ask questions. And unfortunately, sometimes in specific uh, church traditions, people discourage asking questions. But I just want to tell somebody today, God is not afraid of your questions. God actually embraces the questions. So go ahead and ask your question. (laughs) Like for real, go ahead and ask your question. One of the things that I got to do while on this retreat was actually to preach. And what the wisdom that I imparted in the a sermon that I preached, it was something that I just needed to hear even for myself, right? And that's not selfish. I really do believe, and so many other preachers would agree with me, that sometimes the sermon you need to hear is the sermon you need to go on and preach. And so I preached the sermon that I needed somebody to tell me. And what I told them was, do not forget to pray. Don't forget to pray. So many times when we're trying to make moves, we're trying to move forward, we're trying to do the thing, we forget the basics, Do not forget your prayer life. Do not forget to pray. Do not forget the foundation of what you stand upon. You know, yes, read the word. Yes, go to church and be in community if that is safe for you. Um, Yes, do, you know, talk to folk. But whatever you do, don't forget to pray. Okay, like don't forget to talk to God. You have a straight dial up connection, Wi Fi, um, you know, Fios, whatever connection straight to God. Literally, that is faster than any human made technology. You have a line that is always open 24 7. Never have to wonder is it ever going to shut down or if the call is going to drop. You have a direct line and it's called your prayer life. So go ahead. Whenever you feel and you are wondering, God, what am I going to do? Go ahead and pray. Do not neglect. Do not forget. Do not. Oh my God, do not detach away from your prayer life. Somebody needs to hear that, okay? Somebody needs to hear that and that somebody is also myself, okay? Talking to me, 101, okay? Dial my number, okay? Yes, I am so serious. Do not forget to pray. As you go through life, as you go through and you're thinking through, what am I called to do? As you discern, who am I going to be? You know, God, show me the next faithful step. Do not forget to pray. Because these are praying times. You know, we got so much stuff happening in the world right now. Okay, news flash for current events. You know, you got Governor Ron DeSantis down in Florida getting ready to do some really wild stuff. Allegedly, he's getting ready to run for presidential office. And I'm 
never scared of it much. But let me tell you something. I'm terrified for the U.S., okay? Not so much for (laughs) white people, but I'm absolutely terrified for black bodies, brown bodies, Asian bodies, queer bodies, indigenous bodies, and everybody and everybody in between. I am absolutely afraid and, and fearful for women's lives. I am afraid for trans lives. I'm afraid for non-binary lives. I'm afraid for everyone who is not a heterosexual, heteronormative white man who is rich living in the United States. That is who I'm afraid for. I'm afraid for everybody who is not that. (laughs) Okay. And we need to be praying, right? And not just praying for things, right? Okay, like not on some prosperity gospel, name it, claim it. Um, Not on some, you know, you will have, you know, $10,000 in your bank account tomorrow. I mean, if that is your story, beloved, I'm happy for you. But not on that kind of tip of prayer, right? I do believe that God will supply all your needs. But I'm also talking about prayer in terms of, you know, the prophetic prayer of asking God to bring down righteousness, you know, and that God will bring down justice because we have people who are literally trying to take away people's opportunity to have a full and fruitful life. Wholeness is the will of God. Abundance is the will of God. And abundance is not just monetary need. Abundance is also health care. Abundance is also being able to have access to education. Abundance is also being able to to have clean air and healthy food, right? This is abundant living. And we need to be praying because people do not want us to live abundantly. And these are praying times because we need to be asking God for courage. We need to be asking God for bravery. We need to be asking God to give us strength to continue on another day. We need God to give us the strength to know when to rest and to find our peace. We need to be praying to God that we hold on to our joy. These are praying times. And so in this process of discernment, I ask that you would continue to pray and ask God for what you need. If you need courage, ask God for courage. If you need peace, ask God for peace. If you need bravery, ask God for bravery. Whatever it is you need, as you discern, don't forget to pray. And we neglect prayer because we're just like, oh yeah, you know, God God hears me. Or we neglect it because we think it has to be some really deep, profound you know, situation. And don't get me wrong. Like I absolutely, you know, pace around my living room or pace around my, you know, bathroom or my bedroom. And, you know, I might pull over in the car and just have a a little moment. You know, those things are real for me. But, you know, at the same time, I know that God also hears the groan. God hears it when all I can do is throw my hands up. God hears me when all I can say is help God, right? Whatever it is, like God knows the intention. Don't forget to pray. Do not forget to pray. Don't neglect your prayer life. Jesus is with you. Jesus is walking with you. And this is why I love the Lord's Prayer, because it is a prayer for protection. It's a prayer for provision. It's a prayer for direction. It's a prayer of reverence. It's a reminder of who God is, who God will be, and who God has always been, right? Like today, yesterday, and forever to come, right? I love that about God. So that is why we have to continue to pray. We have a God who hears, who knows, who is committed, who is always going to be with us when the being with is necessary. Okay, so do pray as you discern. And we need more people. And I love the theme of the of the retreat. It was um architects for building a better future and I might have botched it but it was something along those lines you know grace abounds so we need architects <laughs> we need people who are visioning who are building who are drafting the blueprints who are seeing the project all the way to the end we need people who are going there <laughs> we need people who are dreaming up a new world because the one that we got we need good God almighty support all the way through the process and so beloved if that is you we need you 
We need you to summon your voice. We need you to summon your power. We need you to summon your, uh, your call and whatever it is that God has called you to do, you need to go do that and do it courageously. You know, go forth and be bold in it. We need you to go forth and do whatever it is that God has called you to do. If it is to be an artist and to paint, to, to do um, some, some beautiful 3D art and renderings and collaging, go do that. If you need to go write uh, a play, a book, a, a poem, a sermon, go write the thing. If you need to go do the podcast, baby, speak. If you need to whatever, whatever it is you need to do, if it's coaching, you know, a little league baseball team, go coach that team. If it is to go be a banker, go do the right thing, be ethical and go do the banking. If it is to profess, be the professor, right? Whatever it is that you are called to do, go do it. And do it for the glory of God. Do it for the glory of your creator. Do it because the universe is cheering you on and your ancestors are supporting you and loving you and the stars are aligning for your good. I'm telling you, whatever you do, do not forget to pray. And that's what I have for you all on today. And that retreat blessed me so much. I pray for each and every one of those young people who I encountered. And I just say, God, speed, because truly God is calling. And these are discerning times. My God, whatever you do, don't forget to pray. And so I'm going to just leave you with that today. And I'm just going to tell you that I love you and I appreciate you. And I thank you all for listening. If you do not mind, make sure you are subscribing to this podcast. Give it five star rating, all that good stuff. You can follow me at Portionality and Portionality Media on social media. All of the good things down in the description box in the show notes of this podcast. I love you all. Love you, love you, love you. Don't forget to share. Take good care. And until next time, blessings. Blessings.